Hi, this is Sean Lamb for VideoUniversity.com. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Illy Athena 1211 Serial ATA DVD controller card installed in a 13 bay tower. I put this DVD tower together to replace my old ACARD 128 tower. The old one was working fine, but this new one is faster, can burn more discs at a time, and has a better disc image storage and naming system than the old one. Now in America, you can buy the system pre-installed with all the drives and ready to go out of the box. Seeing I live in Canada, I actually have fewer options and saved a few hundred dollars, largely due to shipping and assembly costs, by ordering my system in a bare bones configuration. That is, only the tower, cables, controller card, and power supply, and I sourced my drives locally. It was also a lot more fun this way, and it isn't too complicated. But having said that, I am pretty used to tinkering with computers and I assemble and upgrade all my own systems. So I'm pretty comfortable with this type of thing. But if you're not, then you'll want to get your duplicating tower pre-assembled. Now let me start by explaining the technology and components. A controller card is like a computer's motherboard and CPU. It is what controls the DVD drives, hence the name controller. Unlike a computer's motherboard, a controller card is not mounted to the side of a computer tower, but rather it is mounted in a standard five and a quarter inch bay. Another difference between a computer and a duplicating controller card is that the controller card doesn't require an operating system like Windows, software to run the program, or hard drives to store the operating system and software. Controllers use system on chip or SOC technology and are updatable by firmware updates. Newer systems, including my Illy Athena model, use the newer serial ATA connectors. So what is the difference? Well, other than the different cables, IDE systems are slower at transmitting data and are quickly becoming obsolete, which makes finding replacement drives more challenging. The faster dual duplex data transfer that Serial ATA offers and larger onboard RAM on newer controller cards translates into faster duplicating speeds on newer models. Now I should clarify that the faster speed is not due to faster burning speeds. I burn everything at 8 times in an effort to improve compatibility. It is due to faster start times. The time it takes between when you push the copy button and when the buffer loads and the burning actually begins. Okay, time for a funny story. I would have liked to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of my old system and my new one, but I actually sold the old one this morning, so you'll have to take my word for it that the new one burns a full DVD about 90 seconds faster, which makes a big difference when you're burning a lot of discs, like I am right now. This being the beginning of July, my dance recital season is over, and I'll be duplicating 20 DVD masters for a total of 2200 DVDs in the next two weeks. So for me, that extra 90 seconds is going to make a big difference now, but not so much on smaller duplicating jobs in the future. So we've covered off some of the technology. Now let's have a look at how everything is connected. My case came pre-installed with a power supply and enough connections to power each of my drives, including my hard drive. So the power supply powers the drives and the controller card, and the controller card connects to each of the DVD drives and the hard drive. So while the connections are pretty easy to figure out, cable management becomes a bit tricky when you have 13 devices connected to one small controller card. Thank goodness for the smaller serial ATA cables. So what is the point of the hard drive? I've already mentioned that the controller card uses system on chip technology and doesn't require a hard drive. Well, the hard drive is optional and is one of the two ways you can duplicate a disk. The other is disk to disk. To use the hard drive, you load a master and copy the image to a hard drive partition. It might sound complicated, but once you put the disk in the source drive, it is a one button function to load. The front of the controller card has four buttons and a small LCD screen. The navigation is pretty straightforward. Although there are 12 root menus, most everything is done through three of them. Number 12 is the image manager and is where you can load DVD images onto a partition and assign a name. Number eight is the select source function where you decide whether to copy from a DVD source or from an image on the hard drive. And number one is the copy menu, which really isn't a menu at all, but when it is selected, it serves as the start button to commence your DVD duplication. I've been using both my old and new towers side by side for about a thousand DVDs in this past month. This is how they compare. As I mentioned before, the newer model is faster. The new model is also more efficient in allocating its hard drive partitions. The old one occupied 10 gigabytes for each partition when you enabled dual layer burning. So this meant only two partitions on the old 20 gigabyte hard drive that I had sitting around last time I put together the system. 
the new one creates a partition exactly matching the disk size, so no space is wasted. And depending on disk size, I can load more than 65 DVDs on the 300 gigabyte hard drive, which is the smallest one I had sitting around when I put together this system. It's amazing how much has changed in a few years in terms of storage space. Now the best feature on the Ili Athena model is the ability to name the partitions, which makes navigating through disk images much easier. My A card system was a 1 to 7, which means when you have a source disk in the source drive, you can burn to 7 targets at one time. But when you burn from a disk image on the hard drive, you can actually use the source drive as a burner and burn 8 at a time. The Ili Athena system is a 1 to 11, which means 4 more disks when burning disk to disk but only three more when burning from a hard drive image as the ILLI model can only burn 11 at a time. When I was at NAB 2009, I visited ACARD at their booth and told them I had been using their controller card for years and asked what was new with their newer models. The rep chose to focus on the serial ATA technology and the improvement in compatibility and consistency with DVD drives that it allowed. Essentially he said that past models were picky with a combination of drives you installed. I actually experienced this and at one point swapped my Pioneer drives for NEC models due to compatibility issues with both ProDisc and Tiger Uden DVDs. But a colleague of mine has the same controller card and the same Pioneer drives that I replaced and he hasn't had any problems so I can see where he's coming from. So when I bought my Ili Athena Serial ATA model, I wasn't too concerned with the brand of drives I chose and ended up getting LG models, they were less expensive, but they also didn't work properly in this configuration. A call to ILLI tech support revealed that not all drives perform well in their duplicating towers, and a quick check on their compatibility list, which for some strange reason is not available on their own website, confirmed that LG drives don't work with ILLI controller cards. I changed to Pioneer burners and the problem went away. For better performance, they also encouraged me to use a DVD-ROM drive as my source drive, but accomplishing this has been nothing but a bag of hurt as very few companies still make and distribute DVD-ROM drives with a serial ATA connection. I finally located a single ASUS ROM drive that was on their approved list, but it stopped working last week and I have yet to change it. Regardless, I was able to change my source drive to one of the Pioneer burners and use it to load my disk images before duplicating. So what else do you need to know when putting together your own duplicating tower? First of all, make sure you get all the parts. For some reason, the company that sold me my barebone system didn't send any screws along to connect the DVD drives with the case. The industry standard is that the screws come with the case, so they should have included the screws. So when it came time to connecting 13 components to a case without the 104 screws it requires, I had to do a bit of rummaging through my parts drawer, and even my computer supplier didn't have enough for me to fully assemble this case. Eventually I ordered a bag from another supplier, so I've still got a few more screws to put back in that case. Now just a few last notes to wind down this exclusive VideoUniversity.com review. And just because I know I'll get asked, how does the Ili Athena compare with new A-Card controller cards? Well I never got a chance to test any A-Card models, but I wouldn't expect any performance differences, and I confirmed with A-Card that their 1 to 11 model can only burn 11 at a time, even when burning from a hard drive image, so I wouldn't expect any performance enhancements there. How come you chose the ILLI model over the ACARD model? For me it came down to local availability. ACARD doesn't have any Canadian dealers, so I didn't want the hassle of importing and paying for additional handling versus finding a Canadian supplier, which ILLI has. ACARD did want to sell me a controller directly, but they weren't actually able to find me a suitable case supplier, so I went with the ILLI barebone system with the case, power supply and cables so I can get it all in one shot. Now what about forward and backwards compatibility? Can these controller cards be used to duplicate CDs and Blu-ray discs? I looked into forward and backward compatibility and my current Ili Athena model actually supports CD, DVD and Blu-ray duplication. So there you have it, my new duplicating tower using the Ili Athena 1-11 Serial ATA duplicating controller card.